The forced landing of this Ryanair plane in Belarus has deepened the country's isolation as nothing ever has before. And this is the notorious detention centre in Minsk, where Roman Protasevich is now being isolated himself. So he says in this confessional video, just 28 seconds long, the kind political prisoners here are often forced to make, in which the journalist's forehead looks bruised. His father in exile in Poland said those weren't his son's words and that he looked nervous and may have been beaten. Another journalist, Pavel Severinets, was sentenced to seven years hard labor today. Belarus will be free, he chanted. He's one of seven men found guilty of organizing so-called mass rioting last year. Evidence that Belarus is brazening this crisis out with business as usual. Its dictator, Alexander Lukashenko, has been in power for 26 years, the closest Europe has to a North Korean-style dictatorship, one which counts on Moscow's protection whenever the West complains. His latest prisoner, Roman Protasevich, is 26 himself and so has known no other leader. And now he's the victim of that leader's paranoia. Roman Protasevich was the one who was mobilizing society, seniors, students, teachers, doctors, to protest, to show their position, to speak out. And Lukashenko, he's, uh, he doesn't take smart decisions. It's, it's, it's stupid to, to look for logics behind his actions. It was a very emotional gesture. It was a revenge. This regime will survive its state airline being banned from flying to the 20 European cities on its timetable. But the Ryanair incident has woken up Europe to its neighbors' repression, arguably decades too late. President Macron of France wanted the Belarus opposition leader invited to next month's G7 summit. The British host said no, though the UK has called for Protasevich's release and it's planning more sanctions against the country alongside the EU. We've decided to strengthen our individual and economic sanctions, to ban Belarusian airlines from European airports, to invite all European airlines not to fly over Belarusian territory, which will of course happen, and to request an independent international investigation into what happened. Roman Protasevich could surely never have imagined the nightmare of his flight being diverted to Minsk at the whim of its dictator. But the action now being taken against that dictator on his behalf is surely something he could only have dreamed of. Well, earlier I talked to the German MEP David McAllister, who chairs the European Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee. I began by asking him whether sanctions would do any good against a man described by some as the last dictator in Europe. This was a clear and tough reaction. The European Union will now prepare the next round of sanctions, the fourth package. This, of course, has to be carefully uh, prepared and in the end it's about targeting individuals and economic operators who are still responsible for the last European dictator to be in power. That process that you've just described shows, does it not, how the wheels of democracy turn so slowly he is able to run rings around you in the meantime. Well, our policy towards Belarus has been twofold since the rigged presidential elections in August last year. On the one hand, to increase the pressure on dictator Lukashenko. By the way, Mr. Lukashenko himself has also been sanctioned since November last year. And on the other hand, the support for civil society in Belarus on the ground. We have given financial donation, we have given political support. What we want in the long term is free and fair elections in Belarus under international observation. This is still a long way to go, but in the end, we want the people of Belarus to decide themselves. Well, it's interesting that you place so much focus on the people of Belarus. Are you worried, then, that these sanctions, given that they're not just proposed on individuals but on economic entities too, will end up punishing the people that you want to protect? Well, it's important that these economic sanctions, in the end, don't hit the people of Belarus, who are already suffering for so many months. It's about 
targeting those individuals and economic actors that finance the Lukashenko regime. We as a European Union, together with our European and international partners, have to make very clear we are observing very carefully what the dictator and his corrupt elite are doing, what they are doing to their people, and one day we will bring all these perpetrators to justice. Isn't that message rather muddied by the fact that Germany is giving succour to Belarus's big ally, Russia, by agreeing the Nord Stream 2 pipeline? Well, here in the European Union, and I'm a member of the European Parliament, I know that Nord Stream 2 is not a very popular project. The European Parliament has been very sceptical at many occasions, and the majority of member states are sceptical. This is something to be decided by the German government. Like the United Kingdom, also Germany, we're still doing business with Russia, and Germany is dependent on gas imports, especially after we have decided to quit nuclear energy and also now leaving the coal energy. But still, I understand the concerns fully being here in Brussels that the original point of view in Germany that Nord Stream 2 was only an economic project simply doesn't fit. So you personally, is it fair to say you're not the biggest fan of the pipeline? I believe that it is fair that the West German, or that the German uh, industry has decided to build this pipeline. But once it's finished, we want to sit down with our allies and partners in the West, but also our Eastern allies, uh, like in Poland and in the Baltics, and discuss what to do now. But Elections, your party has enthusiastically embraced the pipeline. Sounds to me like you think that might have been a mistake. CDU is a party which has a variety of opinions, and it's well known that on Nord Stream 2, we don't all share the enthusiasm for this project. But now it's up to the German government to decide what to do, and this will play an issue. This issue will play a role during the election campaign, and I have the feeling it might also play a role in the coalition talks after the elections. David McAllister, thanks very much.